The picture in this uh, video is important. You'll notice that it's a series of steps that always go back to the place where you started without actually going up. If you travel anti-clockwise around this uh, diagram then it looks like you you are always uh, moving upwards, uh, taking steps to move upwards but you always end up at the place where you started. <coughs> This is the nature of spiritual work, <laughs> uh, namely that you don't actually ever go anywhere. Now, the reasons why we don't go anywhere, the most important is that your mind is involved. While your mind is involved, then you are never going to go anywhere, because the mind is dualistic and, um, as you will see in a moment, can only operate in one way. Uh, it is either doing something or it's not doing something, it can't do uh, something that's in between those things. So <coughs> this is the nature of spiritual work. So you know you hear people say I want peace. Well do you think they're ever going to get peace while they're saying I want peace? Well no of course not. While they're wanting they're never going to be peaceful. The actual act of wanting peace is going to stop them getting peace. So then the mind can say to itself, OK, well, I'm going to stop wanting peace. <laughs> yeah, uh, hopefully you can see the, um, the problem with that. Uh, as, soon as, you s as soon as you say to yourself, well, OK, I'm going to stop wanting peace, then you're not going to get peace that, e that way either because you're still wanting something. Uh, it's the same with people who want enlightenment. <coughs> a, they have no idea what enlightenment is. They've been sold a story by um, various gurus and people in the West. Now, you know, lots of people in the West are making good money by selling enlightenment. Of course, never, no one ever does become enlightened because uh, there's no such thing. Um, well, not in the sense that many people understand it anyway. So, to say you want enlightenment is basically to indulge in a fantasy. While you're indulging in a fantasy, you're never going to become enlightened, because all you're going to be doing is indulging in imagination. And enlightenment, such as it might be, is nothing to do with imagination. Our, our imagination can only operate in terms of images and words. And th those are the things we used to think. So while we're thinking, we're stuck in our images and words that relate to enlightenment. And of course, we can not step out of that. And as with the ex other example, you can then say to yourself, OK, well, I'm going to drop the idea of enlightenment. But then you're dropping, your, your very I notion of dropping creates a whole new set of ideas. Uh, you know, if I drop these ideas then I may become enlightened but then then you've got a new idea. <coughs> the problem for all of us is that we're stuck in this puzzle and um, in the Zen tradition there were various what were called koans. Most famous I think is what is the sound of one hand clapping. <laughs> And, um, you know, the, the, the rational mind will uh, possibly try and solve that one for years. Um, another koan uh, is rather more approachable, and I'll, I'll give you the, uh, the, the nature of it. I'll tell you the solution to it th at the end. Imagine that uh, there's a fairly large bottle. Not, not all that big, but large enough to get a duck egg, sorry, a goose egg, through the uh, neck of the bottle. So you push the goose egg through the neck of the bottle, you keep the bottle warm so that the goose egg will hatch. And sure enough, a goose, uh, I don't know what they call small uh, geese, um, a gooselet, I don't know, gosling, gosling, I, I would think. Um, so anyway, a gosling emerges in the bottle and it starts to grow. And it grows to the point where it's starting to get cramped in the bottle. But of course it can't get through the neck of the bottle. So how do you get the goose out of the bottle without breaking the bottle or damaging the goose? <laughs> so I'll leave that one with you for a moment. Um, to go to a, more, uh, to a more general point, 
Uh, this is the core. This is the curse of the New Age and of religion. All religions and New Age movements have set before us goals that we feel we have to achieve: peace, contentment, awakening, cosmic consciousness, salvation, samadhi. You know, um, as many names as there are movements and religions on the planet, and as soon as we hear these things then we are immediately in a state of dissatisfaction further away from where we want to be than we were before we heard these things so in most religions if you want to partake, partake in those religions you have to pitch at some kind of goal and the people who operate those religions priests and monks and you know, whoever else, um, are perceived to be the people who can help you move towards those uh, particular goals. I mean, it's a very lucrative sort of business. It's, you know, in normal life, we wouldn't accept that kind of thing. You know, if some guy came to you and said, look, I've got this, um, uh, I've got this car that can travel in outer space and it can take you to Pluto in three hours. And um, you ask for proof of it. And he couldn't show any proof. And he just said, well, what you've got to do is work for the next 20 years. And uh, at the end of that 20 years, give me all the money you've earned and I'll show you the car. Well, you're probably not going to do that. Because a, a, a car that can travel in outer space and reach Pluto in three hours is just as unlikely as un enlightenment. But for some reason we buy into this notion that because these ideas come from what are supposedly uh, people with uh, knowledge and integrity, then we buy into it. And we buy into it, you know, it's, it's not just a passive thing particularly because many people buy into these things because they're unhappy. And they believe that by doing something that they can move towards happiness. What they don't realize is that their unhappiness is only caused by the fact that they believe they're unhappy. There's a famous, um, I think it's a Greek saying, uh, he was unhappy because he thought so. I think that's uh, how it goes. <coughs> There's a lot of truth in that. So, here we are. We've been landed with all these ideas of where we need to go. And actually we don't need to go anywhere. <laughs> the diagram of the steps illustrates very well what most people will spend most of their lives doing. At least people who have what they call a search. And I was once told by somebody who was my teacher in actual fact, that my search was my main obstacle to achieving anything. <laughs> At the time, I, I thought it was crazy. I thought, well, how, how are you going to realize anything without a search, without some kind of driver behind the whole thing? But of course the driver was just making me more and more dissatisfied because I never got nearer to what I implicitly sort of imagined. It was never a total conscious imagining, but what I implicitly imagined might be some state of fulfillment or enlightenment. Um, and I got further and further away in truth. And a lot of this time I was involved with the Gurdjieff movement and Gurdjieff was really, really naughty because he he set before people the idea of developing a soul of some kind of awakening and people buy into that and of course the very action of trying to do those things of all the practices that are involved takes you further away because you're further away from any kind of contentment. Now, to be fair, I need to say that that is the more, um, what's the word, uh, common view of the Gurdjieff work. Uh, most of the teachers that I got involved with in the Gurdjieff work didn't actually work like that. Uh, in fact, they were very, very careful to separate out what was the well, the stubbornness or the um, the demands of the ego from something more real within one. 
but even then I'm you know, I'm I'm creating this duality of ego and something more real. <laughs> it's really tricky territory and it's tricky territory because we create these concepts in our minds and then the concepts become a kind of reality that over well that dominate the current reality which is I'm just sat here now speaking into a microphone and um, it's quite a nice day outside and my dog is near my feet sleeping and that's all there is to it <laughs> I don't actually need to indulge in uh, any of this I produce these videos in the hope that it helps someone avoid what um, or it helps someone avoid the trap that I was uh, very firmly caught in for a long long time and I don't know whether I'll produce any more of these videos in truth it depends on what the um, response to them is anyway let's go back to the goose in the bottle if you remember the goose is in the bottle um, it's growing it's getting too big for the bottle it can't get through the neck of the bottle and neither can uh, we in any way harm the goose in trying to get it out and we can't smash the bottle so how do we get it out I don't know whether to give the answer or leave it to an no, I'm gonna leave it to another video <laughs> that's pure wickedness but anyway the solution to your dissatisfaction and your unhappiness is to let go <laughs> and even that creates a duality in practice what seems to happen certainly happened with me and if you uh, look at people like uh, Eckhart Tolle and Yuji um, Krishnamurti you'll see that they they reach crisis points <coughs> and for whatever reason that seems to be what's needed the crisis point is a point where the ego sort of says I can't deal with this sort of blows a fuse and then you see the silliness of everything that you've been trying to do beforehand so I will give you the answer to the goose in the bottle the goose is out of the bottle <laughs> there's never a bottle and there was never a goose it was in your head you created the problem the problem was purely and simply in your mind and the way your mind operated. The goose can be out of the bottle without any need to break the bottle or to damage the goose because there never was a goose and there never was a bottle so you can do what the hell you want with them in your mind. Anyway I hope that's been useful.